Before further disassembly, we're going to carefully mark the position of the shift forks. Here we've got the first and second, up here is the third and fourth. So that uh, in case we don't use the jig, even though we're planning on using it, but in case we don't, we'll be able to line them back up where they were. So the Haynes manual shows using a hacksaw. I'm going to use a little engraving tool to do it. Okay, third and fourth isn't so easy to mark, so what I'm going to do is I'll just uh, measure how far back it is. We can tell here it is about 62 thousandths back on third and fourth. To remove the forks, we're going to use an 11 millimeter socket take this one loose. That's going to take both of us holding on it. They're in there pretty good. And an 11 millimeter box wrench to take the other one loose. Actually, it looks like you can just push it back a little bit. Get the socket wrench on it. Good to know. Let me try to get them back into neutral. I'll just take them all the way out. To get the fork loose, we're going to have to drive the first and second shaft backward. Easy enough to do. Careful not to pull it out. Yeah, we don't want to pull it all the way out. Then we can take it off and uh, keep it later for inspection. Now the third and fourth the guide says it isn't quite uh, quite so easy to drive out and take out yet. So we'll probably hold off a little bit on it until we push the gear carriers out a bit. Okay, so it wasn't all that hard to get the third and fourth uh, fork out after all. What we did is we took an extension and kind of lightly tapped it on back through the shift fork and then it just kind of wiggled and came out. It's important to keep these straight because they look quite similar. The, uh, in our case the third and fourth one looks like it's a little bit smaller than the first and second. It's just a little bit shorter. So we can keep track of them that way or what will probably be the smarter thing to do is to put it in a baggie and label it. Okay, the reverse gear is adjusted by this uh, nut here that tightens down on this shaft. So we're also going to take and mark it. Even though I don't know that we're going to remove it right now, we uh, certainly want it marked in case we do remove it later. So we'll take and we'll put a little mark there. And the Haynes book also says these uh, brackets are adjustable, so I'll take and I'll put some marks on them. Hopefully that should give us some good reference to put it all back together if we need to. Okay, we secured the uh, two shafts together with some rubber bands just to make it easier to handle. 
For now, we're going to try to leave all this stuff for the reverse on here and just uh, see what happens. We'll pull it off if it gets in the way, otherwise I don't see a reason to mess with it. And the next step is going to be to take it over to the press, where we will uh, remove these two lock nuts and uh, press the bearings out, or press the uh, shafts out. Okay, we've uh, repositioned the uh, intermediate housing back in the, uh, the rest of the transaxle. I'm using it as the transaxle as a jig, so I'll be able to press on it. Uh, we use these spacers, came with the, uh, the jig and tool kit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in, press down on that bearing. First, we're going to have to take two snap rings loose. There's a snap ring on this shaft and a snap ring on this shaft. Manual says this is under a lot of spring tension, says to wear safety glasses when taking it off. And that uh, lock ring can go flying way up in the air. Hmm. Okay, we now have the transaxle positioned with our little uh, spacers and everything is lined up for the press. And we're going to take a socket and stick it in there and press those shafts out. We renew remove the uh, the two little uh, circlips, they were both under some tension. The one on the, uh, the left on the big bearing had kind of a concave washer under it. The one on the right had a bunch of uh, spring tension on it from the, uh, the little springy thing that's inside of there. So good thing to keep an eye out for those. Okay, we've now got it lined up in our uh, press and we're going to use that socket there to uh, press the shaft out. We've got the uh, two shafts hooked together with rubber bands and we have a bunch of uh, bubble pack sitting down in there just so that when we do push this stuff out it doesn't uh, you know fall and smash itself into something. Okay so we're going to start disassembling the uh, pinion shaft. This was under a bunch of spring tension when we took it off of the uh, the block over there. The first thing on here is a race. This race here went inside of the little needle bearing in the in the housing. I'm also going to try to keep an idea of these as we take them apart which side goes where. This is uh, fourth gear here. I can see there's some lettering and stuff on the inside of it. So there's a little E. But remember that the little E goes uh, inside toward the uh, other gears. And then the side without a little E goes to the outside. Got this spiral round wound uh, springy thing. Yeah, a lot of ugly sludge in it. I would assume this can probably go on either way. Next, snap ring in there we're going to have to deal with. Seems to be a recurring theme. See the snap ring pliers in there? There they are. I forgot what I called that. If I called that fourth? Yeah. Yeah, that's fourth. Oh, look at that. It's actually a ring that's going to come out easily. So we've got a ring. See, we had going this way, line these up on a screwdriver. A race. A uh, fourth gear with the E to the inside. A springy thing. And a ring. Next off comes third gear. Look at that sludge. Yeah, sludgy stuff in there. Third gear, the race goes towards the inside. Next up will be second gear. Those will come together and look like yeah. yeah. Second gear. Again, the race is pointed that way. I should have. You want to? 
then you guys will start laying the stuff out on the ground mode to all fit over the end of that. Then we have a slider hub assembly. That's the... Yeah, okay, here's a synchro ring. Yeah. This would be the second gear synchro ring. The little pointy side on the teeth points toward the synchro. Now I'm told this synchro hub, we're supposed to avoid, whoa, mm. yeah, we're supposed to avoid that happening. There's little teeth in there, little keys. I don't want to fall out. Let's try to get this thing. Make sure he's not getting into trouble. Yeah, he's a little bit off. There we go. Yeah, we kind of sprung a spring. Move that little spring back in there. So this is a synchro hub. Um, we can see there's some little little keys in here that would really like to fall out. Facing this way. Yeah, it faces that way. Um, it slides back and forth on there. It's got a springy thing. It's, oh, look at that. There's a little spacer in there. I <laughs> remember. So that spacer was between the hub. I haven't flipped this over, have I? No. Okay, good. This was that side. So there was a little spacer washer in there. And there's a synchro hub. Now we've got a first gear synchro ring, pointy sides, pointing toward the uh, synchro hub. Opposite this one. Opposite that one. I'll start putting these back in here. I don't want to put this up there because it feels like it'll fall apart again. And then a first gear. Yes, yeah, some yucky stuff in there. And first gear's needle bearing is held on with a nut, and we're not going to take that off. The book says don't take that off. And that is all for disassembly of the pinion shaft. I can kind of see why this thing's been is so sludgy moving. Yeah. There's so much gummy stuff in there. We're almost gonna have to. Okay, so now it's time to take this shaft apart. Um, there's a few things that are easy to get off. There's this thrust washer on the end. You know, it was supposed to be easy to get off. It was easy to get off before we salt soaked it in the solvent. Okay, so we can pull off this thrust washer and uh, fourth gear. Just yank them off. Thrust washer likes to stick. There's the thrust washer. There is fourth gear and the fourth gear uh, synchro. Now to get the rest of this off, we're going to have to take it over to our press. And what we're going to do is we're going to support third gear in our press. Which way this thrust washer? Yeah, that went in with that marked upside down. This will go in the uh, press. We're going to support third gear with this uh, Harbor Freight, proudly made in China, uh, bearing spreader. We've uh, positioned the uh, shaft on our uh, Harbor Freight bearing spreader and set up on a couple of blocks get an extra little bit of height and we're going to press down on the shaft and press the uh, third gear the uh, synchro ring and this little uh, inner race will press them out once we get as far as we can get with the press by itself we're going to use this little sleeve to push it on through the rest of the way again a helper is going to be down there to make sure the thing don't land on the ground